All right, we're recording now. Thank you everyone for joining us for our July Supplier Spotlight. This is a non-traditional supplier, our wonderful Orlando Airport MCO. Uh, we're joined here by Darren, uh, which if this is your first time joining or watching one of our webinars, I'm Scott. I am on the Central Florida ASTA board and I help organize these. Um, which means I am always open to suggestions. So this is a little shameless plug. If you have any suppliers or any educational topics that you all are interested in learning about, please add it to the post session survey. We always want to give you what you're looking for, um, opposed to coming up with ideas ourselves that miss the mark. A uh, couple of housekeeping things. If you are watching this live, there is a Q&A box. Please use that to ask any questions. Uh, just because if you put them in the chat and the chat gets crazy, we lose track of them and your answers, your questions go unanswered. Um, but otherwise, the chat's an option for you all to kind of chit chat. And if you have any random comments you want to add about what we're talking about, that's the place to do it. Uh, but I'll go ahead and turn this over to you, Darren, if you want to take away, take it away. Sure. Um, so good afternoon, everyone. My name is Darren Lapana. I'm the manager of Air Service and Business Development for the Orlando International Airport. So hopefully some of you have heard of us, MCO down your street, just your small community airport. Um, so looking forward just to giving you guys some updates about data, what num our numbers are looking like, destinations, what's new, construction, all that good stuff. And then of course, always happy to answer questions. We'll see as this goes on, um, how we do questions if we wait till the end or if I answer them as we're going. Just again, please do use the chat feature and the Q&A feature so then I can answer questions as we go through. So again, um, just gonna give you some updates so we'll get started on the numbers. I always find these hard to do because it's nice to see a crowd of people versus just speaking to yourself on screen, but I'll try my best. So let's get started. So how did 2022 do for Orlando International Airport? So it was a busy year. I think most of you coming through here would have experienced our airport. And we pretty much finished 2022 at 50.2 million passengers. So we were just about 1% below 2019 levels. So when you talk about aviation, we always talk about 2019. That was the last normal year and it was a record breaking year for Orlando International. It was the first year we ever broke 50 million passengers coming through our doors. So right now for 2022, we were back again at 50 million and one of the very few airports throughout the United States that can say we were growing fast and we're close to 2019 levels. There are quite a few um, terminals, um, airports around the US that haven't managed to get to 2019 levels yet. So something that is pretty cool. So we'll jump on to how are we doing for this year? And we're still very busy. We, finished May of this year with over 54 million passengers. So that is definitely a big increase and above 2019 levels by 10%. So again, 2019 was a record breaking year for us. And here we go, we're breaking 2019 levels and we are at 54 million passengers. Domestic continues to be our strongest. It's going to be the fastest growing because just because it's easy to get around the United States versus international. International is still lagging a little. Part of that issue is changing aircraft types. So of course, Virgin Atlantic don't have those 747s going over to Gatwick anymore, which had over 400 seats. So that's definitely um, part of some of the reason why we haven't got to 100% of international travel. Um, but also, you know, as we look back at the last 12 months, part of the reason why international travel isn't back to where it was because in the last 12 months, some countries still had restrictions. We still had restrictions into this year. So as we look into the summer, I think we're definitely going to expect to see a little bit more growth in international and hopefully be closer to 2019 levels as we finish out this year. But definitely very busy. Um, Janine did ask a question, Terminal C looks, looks like it has so much land, but not being utilized as it looks like it should be. Is this going to continue to grow? Yes. So um, right now we had a lot of airlines move in the first phase of um, our airline moves. And then right now we're looking at trying to rebalance the airport terminals. So 
Really, Terminals A and B were really designed to comfortably handle 40 million passengers. Terminal C can comfortably handle 10 to 12 million, if not a little more. So again, looking at my math, we're still above capacity, but at 54 million, um, yeah, there is some rebalancing. So keep an eye on airlines moving down to Terminal C, as well as potential growth of airlines down in Terminal C. Um, one thing to mention also is JetBlue, when they had first, um, you know, said that they will be our anchor, ter anchor airline for Terminal C, they would be at a certain level of operation. And right now they haven't met those requirements, um, but also it's because they are working on um, they are working on that merger with Spirit Airlines. So I think that is part of the reason why Terminal C does not seem as busy as it should be. But if you go at certain points of the day, it definitely feels very busy, especially in the afternoon when all those long haul flights leave from Terminal C. You'll definitely see it. I see someone votes Delta to move to Terminal C. You never know, um, but right now I can't confirm which airlines are moving down there. Probably not Delta at this time, just an FYI. <laughs> so um, in terms of how is Orlando comparing to other Florida airports, we continue being the busiest airport in the state of Florida. I think one thing is people would expect Miami to be the busiest, but actually MCO is the busiest in the state of Florida and we continue to grow. If you keep looking at how COVID and all that stuff, our projection and our growth has been very strong. I think part of that is, you know, the, it, us as a destination continues to be a great place to come visit, but also the amount of people moving here. We have so many people moving to our region that they want to get out, they want to travel, and hopefully you as travel advisors have been able to take advantage of this, is that you have people who want to travel, leave Florida, especially during these months. Um, you want to go somewhere cooler, definitely, um, we're definitely seeing that. So also in terms of um, TSA throughput, we're the fifth busiest airport in the United States. So this is based on TSA throughput, not on total passengers. So these are people who have to go through TSA. So we are the fifth busiest, but if you look at those airports, LAX, JFK, Chicago, and Atlanta, these are airports that have multiple terminals, multiple checkpoints. Our three checkpoints, especially the two in terminals A and B, are the busiest checkpoints in the United States. The amount of traffic that we process through our checkpoints are the biggest, just because of the fact that we have that many only going through three checkpoints. Our TSA um, agents are doing the best that they can to get everyone through the checkpoints as quickly as possible. And the majority of guests do get through within 30 minutes. I know when you might have arrived at the airport, those lines might look a little bit long, um, but they really are trying to process in a reasonable amount of time. And there are a number of options that I can tell you a bit about later that can help you speed through the airport just a little bit quicker. And then also what we like to point out is MCO is a, the number two largest OND airport in the United States. And what does that mean? OND is origin and destination. This means the majority of our passengers, 93% of our passengers go through our front doors. They come in, to, they check in, they get on their plane. They're not connecting. So unlike airports like Atlanta, where only 43% of those passengers actually go through their front door, 94% of our passengers come through our front door. So that definitely is a, another reason why our airport will definitely feel a lot more busy than other airports is because of the majority of the people who are coming through here are not connecting. They go through our front door, they leave out our front door also. So that definitely means we're a very busy airport. And then in terms of seat capacity, this is an eye test, but what it's showing is we have a lot of seats. The seats for 2023 between now and November all exceed 2019 levels. So again, lots of seats, lots of possibilities, um, and we continue to break our records. So it's definitely a good sign. It's a sign that airlines are committed to our region because they're seeing not only are people flying into our region, people are flying out. And one thing to highlight is our point of origin, point of sale, Orlando continues to grow. And that helps airlines because they need to fill their planes on the inbound and the outbound. And um, having this amount of seat capacity just shows that our region is doing very well. Um, so where are these planes going to? You see them, where are they going? So let's show you some route maps. We have 102 domestic destinations um, within the United States. 
these are non-stop destinations. These are not destinations where you have to fly through Atlanta. These are your non-stop. So that means you can pretty much get to most states. I'm working on trying to get a non-stop to each of our 50 states. But right now, um, this is the destinations that we have. And it's great because now you have options to go somewhere. You're not wasting your whole day having to make a connection. I've gone to places like recently Milwaukee where I had to connect instead of doing the nonstop just because of how schedules worked out. Ended up taking me the whole day. It should, at that point, I should have waited for the nonstop because then I would have not had to waste a whole day. So we do have a lot of nonstop destinations throughout the United States. The 11th highest in the United States, and we actually have more non-stops than Fort Lauderdale, Miami, and Tampa. So pretty much wherever you need to get throughout the US, you do have the options. And then in terms of international, we have 50 international non-stop destinations. Again, um, pretty much we have a lot of traffic into Canada, the Caribbean, Mexico, and South America, as well as Europe. So Again, these are all places which have a lot of people coming in from, but also means that we can take opportunity of those and some very reasonable rates. However, looking at the summer, the um, average cost of flying overseas is, continues to go up, but the cost of actually being in those cities are pretty good. Is there an easy way to find the nonstop airlines? Yes, so on our website, we show all our destinations and then under each destination, you'll be able to see which airlines are operating those flights. So if you just go to orlandoairports.net and go to flights, and then you can click around, you'll be able to see um, which airlines operate those nonstops. So um, in terms of what airlines are serving MCO, we have the broad range of airlines, everything from the um, super fancy like Emirates all the way down to Spirit and Frontier. Um, and of course, yes, they all have their niche. And of course, Frontier and Spirit, they have, you know, they're able to provide that service, which is nonstop to some of these markets, which, you know, really wouldn't get a nonstop because other airlines wouldn't want to serve those. So I definitely would say, give them a chance. They do try their best. Um, how, however, when bad weather comes through, it can mess up even the most um, best scheduled airlines in the world. So just keep, um, keep an eye out on them. Just know what you're getting yourself into. Tight leg room, you'll be nickel and dimed. But if you can get there without having to make it a whole day affair, they might actually do you a good um, option. And I know Frontier do work with um, travel advisors as well as Spirit. So if you have any questions about that, do reach out and I can also help with that. Um, of course, in terms of our international carriers, we've got Virgin Atlantic into London Heathrow, as well as Edinburgh, as well as Manchester, and then you've got British Airways into London Gatwick. I know some of you guys would have loved British Airways to stay in Heathrow. I agree, just because of the amount of options they have with connecting on. And then, of course, Norse is another option over into London Gatwick. And then Lynx Air will be making some announcements for more Canadian service in the next coming weeks. So again, looking into next summer, this will give you other options to get into other destinations throughout Canada. One other carrier to point out is JSX. They don't serve too many destinations from Orlando, but this is like a private jet experience. So if you need to go over to Dallas for business or for pleasure, this is a great little airline because they only have about 30 seats on the plane, I think 35 seats on the plane. Um, they actually operate from a private jet terminal, so not from terminals A and B. We'll see. And um, it's just a great little um, airline to try. So just to point them out of all our airlines. And then, of course, throughout the year, we'll continue to have airlines add in service and remove service just because during the seasons, especially the high seasons for like Canada inbound, they like to serve during the winter season. So that will be the October to about April time. Um, and then also into Brazil, they like to op operate during this, um, our winter time, their summer time. So you'll see service throughout the year kind of fluctuate. But again, if you have any questions on which airlines are serving during which times, you're always welcome to reach out. And of course, it is updated on our website. So again, Icendair will return in September with all those opportunities to fly into Europe with one stop in Iceland and also they do have the Iceland Air stopover program where you can add a stop in Iceland either on the way there or back at no extra cost. Of course you have to pay for your flights 
um, your hotels and so forth, but it is a pretty cool program. And having been to Iceland for the first time in January, it is such a cool country to go visit. So just another one to point out. So of course, Terminal C, the brand new terminal, which is coming up on its one year anniversary, it is now fully complete. Um, all of our concessions are open. There is one that is still in the air if they will open, but it definitely is fully open. And um, I hopefully you guys have been able to experience this new terminal. It's bright, it's different. It's got all the fancy gadgets you would expect in the terminal. Um, it has a new um, baggage handling system where your bag doesn't actually roll around on baggage belts. And you've all seen kind of those horror stories of um, those kind of baggage systems. This new baggage system is um, where bags are placed into their own tote, ba um, tote bin and it's carried around in its bin, this bin. So it doesn't knock into other bags. We're able to follow where that bag goes at all times. Um, this terminal has 15 gate positions which can hold up to 20 aircraft because in some of these gates you can either fit one very wide body like a British Airways 777 or two small jet blue planes. Um, and then also in our customs and immigration hall and it's a bag's first um, system. This was what customs and immigration had asked us to put in. Um, so that's what happens is you actually pick up your bags first then you go to immigration. So the hope is that instead of everyone going to immigration and then going to get their bags, that they all get their bags and then they'll trickle through immigration so the wait times are less. Now, the question about sidewalks, moving sidewalks in Terminal C. Um, so that is something which they are bringing to the board in August. And that is something they're looking at adding, um, moving the sidewalks. One thing to point out is during the time of the designer of this terminal, there were multiple thoughts that were coming into play and how long you will have to walk. So I know that didn't really make sense. So in terms of um, international airport terminal planning, a lot of them do kind of not use moving sidewalks because you're able to walk it. Um, without any chance moving sites will be added at some point. I've been in many international airports and I've never seen a long walk to get to Beijing without moving sidewalks. So um, yes, so in terms of airport planning, the thought was that the longest walk wouldn't actually be that long. But when they started doing construction, they decided to make the one leg of the terminal the full length versus half of it and then doing the other half on the other side. That doesn't explain it obviously very easy in terms of the fact that I don't have a map in front of me, but they decided to build one long wing. Because the point is at the end of that long walk, there will be another pod, which is similar to um, the, um, the palm court that you see in this picture. There will actually be an APM connecting. So then hopefully your walks will be shortened and the longest walk that you have in Terminal C right now would be half this length. But with construction, they decided not to build just a half length, they built the full length, and therefore now we don't have an APM connecting the two pairs. So therefore the long walks are um, happening. So what they're doing is up in that term, up in that um, corridor, when you come off your aircraft, they do have these um, passenger movers that will pick you up and take you over to the baggage claim. Um, it is something they're looking at and they are going to be bringing to the board this um, August for options of where those sidewalks go. Um, but again, it was something which has been talked about in the airport planning, um, which is new international standards of where you put sidewalks and on paper, and it's something that I've definitely experienced because my background is in airport planning. On paper, it says you don't need to put moving walkways because it's not that far, but actually experiencing it is a different thing. So it is something we're looking at and hopefully we'll be able to respond to the needs of our guests, especially now we are looking at our future planning of Terminal C. We have more gates coming online, which I'll discuss in a moment, as well as phase two. So of course, some of the key things to point out is the prow. It's the big pretty thing at the front of the terminal that kind of gives you an idea of where Terminal C is, where the front of the terminal is, and it's a way of, um, um, so yeah, it's, it, it's the feature of the terminal, so you always know where the prow is and where the center of our terminal is. In terms of our international baggage claim, again, you arrive on the 
upper level of the terminal. So the whole point of flipping the experience is international arrivals and arrivals arrive on the top level because after a long flight, you definitely want to experience the light. You don't want to be dropped down into the basement like you currently do on Airside 4. You're brought up to a lot more of a light facility. And I think that's something which definitely feels good after an eight, nine hour flight being brought up into the light and having this, you know, very open experience. Um, hopefully you all agree. And then on top of that, we have these experiential media environments throughout the terminal. So you have Windows on Orlando, which is towards JetBlue gates. And these have um, scenes from the region of Central Florida. So um, these are some great screens. You have a rocket launch going off every, um, every so often, some of our ranches in Osceola County. So it was pretty cool to watch and um, experience. And then of course the moment vault, which is right in the center of Terminal C. So as you come after security, you'll enter into our Palm Court, which has the majority of our concessions and stores. You'll see this in the center, which has just some fun experiences. Um, it'll actually interact with you when you go on, on the inside screen. So definitely go in and enjoy and have some fun with that. And then of course our seating, we have lots of different kinds of seating. We don't just have the bench seating, we do have it, but we just don't have that type of seating. We have these different like seating options throughout the terminal area. So you can, you know, work, you can eat a meal. So, and then kids have like a little area as well. So for whichever type of traveler you are, you have a type of seating experience. And having done tours of Terminal C, the thing that people get the most excited about is not these fancy screens or these different kinds of seats, it's just our wireless charging. So on the browser seats you see to the right and the left of the screen, um, when you sit down, you can actually put your phone down, um, your iPhones down or other phones which have wireless charging and it will charge wirelessly. So one of the biggest things that people will take away from the brand new Terminal C is um, wireless charging. Now, in terms of our food and beverage options, we have a lot of um, local options now, which definitely is something that feedback from passengers are that they want to be able to try local foods. Um, so we have Sunshine Diner by Chef Art Smith. So he has um, homecoming over at Disney Springs. We have Wine Bar George, again, from Disney Springs. We have Orlando Brewing as well as Orange County Brewing. So again, you can drink. Um, Old Health Bakery is from Winter Park, as well as Barnings, which is a coffee company. If you ever had their coffee, um, coffee ice cream from Publix, then this is the real um, Barney's. And then um, also, of course, we have the regular things. We have Starbucks, we have Chick-fil-A. Um, we also have, um, what's the other one that we just opened is the one that's going over at Disney Springs. I can't remember the name, um, but that one also we have at Terminal C. So looking to the future, so I think someone just mentioned about Brightline. Um, so yes, Brightline, let's see if I got a picture, no I don't. So right next to Terminal C is the train station. So one thing that a lot of people kind of thought was that building that we had down there, they thought that was Terminal C. Then we started building Terminal C and then people wondered what that building actually is. That is our train station. So it's adjacent to Terminal C and it will be connected um, by a walkway. Right now it's connected through the parking garage um, and in the future they, they, will be, um, they will be connected a lot better. Just because of COVID we had to cut a few projects. But yes, it's, um, Brightline is adjacent to Terminal C and it is starting this summer. Right now, they are selling tickets for September 1st, but um, whispers are on the street that they should be, um, as long as the FRA, which is the Federal Rail Administration, gives them their approvals that they might be starting in August. So right now, um, Brightline is the train that will be connecting Orlando International Airport to South Florida. They'll have stops in West Palm Beach, Boca, Fort Lauderdale, Aventura, and Miami. So um, you should be able to get to Miami within three hours and 30 minutes. In the future, there will also be an option for a high, um, for the non-stop down to Miami that will take two hours and 59 minutes. Um, again, if you're a big cruisers going from West Palm Beach, Fort Lauderdale, and Miami, these are great options because then you don't have to tackle I-95 or the Florida Turnpike. I know I love to go on cruises and driving down 
is never fun. You get to the cruise port already pretty non stressed. So, having a train where you can sit back, relax, drink prior to your、um, vacation is definitely a great option. So, these are、um, got tickets on sale right now $79 one way in their regular economy cabin, $149 one way in their premium cabin. The premium cabin will include the drinks. It also will have a more of a meal service. Currently, they have a snack service just because on their shorter train rides between West Palm Beach and Miami, they can't, there's not enough time to do a meal service. So, that's what we're hearing is going to be a little bit more of an elevated experience as you currently have.、Um, you have free Wi Fi on the train. The stations themselves are fun places to be. They have a premium lounge for those in the premium cabins, and it's just going to be such a great product to get down to South Florida. Trains will start as early as 5 a.m. and go on till about 9 p.m. from Orlando, and then the return direction around from 7 a.m. to 10 p.m. from Miami. So there's going to be trains throughout the day. So, again, for those who are going down on cruises or possibly just doing a day trip down to South Florida, this is definitely going to be something we're excited about. So, what is the future for Orlando International Airport right now?、Um, Terminal C opened in 2022. 2023, we're going to see Brightline trains doing service down to South Florida. And then 2025, the phase one expansion of Terminal C with four extra gates or eight、um, narrow body aircraft will be opening the summer of 2025. So, if you do drive past Terminal C, you'll definitely see that there's more construction going on. And that is eight extra gates that will be added on. And again, one thing to point out is that those gates will have escalators that will take you up to the immigration arrival,、um, immigration level, as well as elevators. So that's one thing that has been learned from phase one is that that would be a big plus. And then, what is the future of Terminal C and the regular terminal? So, right now, we are going through our future plans of what's going to happen next. What will the terminals A, B start looking like? What will those gates look like? And then, what else will happen to Terminal C? So, in terms of expansion of Terminal C, you can see in this red box over here、um, that is.、Um, The extra gates that we're currently building, they'll be opening in 2025. Also, the bridge, which is, I don't know if you can see my cursor, this blue area here, this bridge was removed because of COVID.、Um, so, right now, this is being built. They just started、um, you know, cleaning that up. So, that should be 15 months for the real connection bridge between Terminal C and the train station, because currently, right now, you can get to the train station from Terminal C by going through the garage. It's not the best、um, you know, experience right now. So that should be、um, operational by next summer. And you'll also have the permanent home of our rental car counters for that area. So you can see here, these are the new gates that we're adding on. And、um, that is something to look forward to.、Um, and then, in terms of the future outlook, phase two is actually something which we've been given the go ahead to start designing. Gate、um, phase two will be up to another 20 gates, and it will be based pretty much just at the end of the JetBlue gates as you know them today.、Um, and also, we'll have another node similar to the Palm Court. So, these are all things that are being planned for the continued growth here at NCR. So, Janine did ask about what about baggage fees. That is on the airlines. Airlines are able to choose if they charge for baggage. It is not something that we as an airport can control.、Um, for an airline to operate from here, they do have fees and charges that they do have to pay. But baggage fees, as oh, what about baggage fees for Brightline? For Brightline, that would be a question for Brightline.、Um, right now, I know that they do,、um, they do allow for one bag up to 23 kilos、um, included in your ticket. But again, that would be a question for Brightline.、Um, and also, that's a good point for Carl and Scott that I do have a contact for Brightline. So potentially, maybe they could be a future speaker for you guys. <laughs>、um, and then, in terms of Terminal D, this is Terminal D over here. Phase three of Terminal C pretty much extends it all out. So, this is what the future of Terminal、um, Orlando International Airport can look like. 
Again, this is going to take multiple years because we're going to build based on demand. And um, hopefully, knock on wood, I'm still not here working here. I might be hopefully retired by the time they build Terminal D, but it can pretty much mirror what you currently see with Terminal C. So passenger amenities, what kind of things do we have going on at MCO and some things to highlight? So speed through MCO. One thing to highlight is MCO Reserve. This is a complimentary product. This is for those guests who do not have TSA pre-check or a clear, um, was it? Yeah, a clear membership. These are for those passengers who only maybe fly one time a year or two times a year and do not want to um, sign up for TSA pre-check or um, a global entry. So this is a time to go through TSA. It's its own dedicated line. It will be the same TSA experience as any, everyone else. So you still have to take off your shoes, take out your electronics and your, um, your liquids. But this is free. It will give you a time to go through TSA and your own dedicated line. So this is a great additional add-on for your guests as well as your clients. You don't have to tell them about them. You can just say, hey, look, I got your reservation time to go through TSA and um, they will think you're a rock star. So just one thing to point out, it is bookable 72 hours before your flight. You put in your flight information, the name and email, and it'll provide them a QR code, which will they will show at the um, line. So this is another opportunity to get through security quicker. So especially if you don't have DSA pre-check or clear or global entry, this is one thing to point out. Another thing to point out, which I don't have a slide for, which I remember this morning, is the um, mobile passport app. So if you are arriving into Orlando from an international flight um, and you do not have global entry, this is another chance to get through immigration quicker. You download the app and then you're able to put in your passport information and all that good stuff. On arrival at the gate, turn on your phone and use your um, cell service, not Wi-Fi, I mean, you can use Wi-Fi once you get into the terminal. You'll take a picture of yourself and then it'll come up with a QR code. So then when you go to immigration, they just scan that QR code and you hopefully will get through a lot quicker. So mobile passport, that's another thing to point out. So again, if you don't have um, global entry and you don't travel that much, that is something else to add on. And then um, lounging about at MCO, we do have multiple lounge options here at the airport. Plaza Premium Lounge just um, opened with Terminal C. It's definitely a very different experience to the current lounges that we have. It definitely is an elevated experience. They have the showers, they have a great buffet, they have um, food that you can order off the menu, alcohol is included, all that good stuff. And it has great views of the apron as well as the inside of the, the Palm Court. Another one to point out is Club MCO, which is located here in the main terminals of A and B and they are um, over by gates one through 29 and gates 70 through 99. So that is another option for you. Um, Janine, I paid for global entry, but I can't get an appointment. Is this going to change in the future? Uh, there's definitely a backlog of global entry. And one thing to point out is you can do your global entry appointment on arrival. So if you are going on an international trip, you can actually do your global entry appointment on arrival back into the United States. That's one thing to point out. Another thing is there are awesome websites that you can search, which I don't know if it's off of my head, that will give you a warning um, that will let you know that there is an opening um, for an appointment to sign up. So that is some things to point out. And Tarika, has Plaza Premium changed their hours? Each time I've been there, they were always closed and said they only open in the afternoon and evening. Correct. They just recently changed their hours this the past couple of weeks. They now open at 7 a.m. and close at 11 p.m. So that is one thing to point out. And they are also now back on priority path. So if you have that kind of uh, membership, they are available for priority path on top of the credit cards and all the other things that they currently take. Um, but also the three main airlines, American Delta United, also have lounges at the airport. So again, there is a lounge that should meet your needs when flying through MCO. So pretty much that was a very quick, somewhat quick um, overview of everything that is going on at Orlando International Airport. We have lots of flights. We are definitely break, breaking more records in terms of passenger traffic going through our terminals. Um, of course, another question I'm sure that a lot of you ask is parking. We are definitely feeling parking as a pain point for us at MCO. 
So um, one thing that we are doing, we are building three new parking lots that will open up another 700 parking spots. They will be right by the train station. So you will not need to take a bus to the terminals. You'll be able to walk into the train station, either walk to terminal C, it will be about a 10 to 15 minute walk to terminal C, or you can jump on the APM, the terminal link, That'll take you from the train station up to terminals A and B. Especially if you're flying Delta, that's nice because the, um, the terminal link drops you right off by the security checkpoint for terminal um, for the Delta terminal, as well as Southwest and um, Virgin Atlantic and those carriers that kind of operate from that area. Um, but yes, pack your patience. Um, you know, the amount of people part, um, moving to Orlando continues to be at about 1,000 people per week. And that's just stuff that you're not able to plan for. Parking takes multiple years to come. We're definitely looking at other parking options, but at least in the short term, there is another 700 spots on its way. But yeah, that's it from me from Orlando International Airport. Any other questions, comments? Want to yell at me for anything? Go for it. <laughs> well, yeah, thank you for everything. This is exciting information for anyone that's lived here and dealt with uh, ancient parts of MCO. Uh, all the nice updates are really good and hopefully they'll be able to update the other terminals once you guys offload some of that workload. So question from Barbara is how much does the MCO lounge cost? So Plaza Premium currently is $50 for three hours. The club MCO, I'm not sure off the top of my head, I think it's around $40 to $45. But again, you can Google it to sign up for, um, to make a reservation for either of those. Yeah. Sorry, Scott, go ahead. <laughs> and just, uh, and for anyone that isn't aware of, American, Delta, and United's Club, those are all membership-based, uh, which either from frequent flyers or first class or whatever the case is, um, but you have to talk to those airlines to figure out club access. If anybody has any last-minute questions, please feel free to add them into the chat. Um, we'll give a few moments here. Um, you also see Darren's email on the screen. So if you have any follow-up questions that you think of after, I'll volunteer them that he's happy to take them. Sure am. Darren, I have a question. Yes. Um, so where do you see, do you, where do you see the volume trends as far as, um, you know, is if you have a 6 a.m. flight, you know, it's important that you be there at you know, 3.30 because the security lines are really long. You have a noon flight, it's not as busy. You know, where do you see those trends and what do you recommend as far as uh, being at the airport in advance based on departure time? Correct. So definitely if you have an early morning flight, those 6 a.m., um, 5 to 7 a.m. flights, those are going to be our biggest crunch times because what happen is, happens is airlines like to park their planes here at MCO overnight and they all want to leave at the same time in the morning, which is between five and seven. So again, be prepared for long lines, especially at those times of the morning. Um, I do recommend uh, being inside the terminal two hours beforehand if you're a domestic flight. So what that means is you're already parked and you've already stepped foot in the terminal two hours prior to your flight. Um, especially if you're looking at checking bags, that that I would say you do need to be there at least two hours, especially in the early morning, because again, all those passengers are flying out, they all wanna check the bags at the same time. So those lines can get pretty long. Um, again, I always recommend if you can do carry on, that would be better. But again, if you need to check in, be inside the terminal two hours before domestic flight. International flights, we always say three hours because Checking can take a little bit longer. They need to check your passport. They need to check your details, especially if you're flying to somewhere that needs a visa. And this, um, just make sure that you're in the terminal at the right time. Um, so those are things that we can definitely, you know, uh, that's what I would recommend. Um, so yeah, the early morning as well as the afternoon. So 5 p.m. onwards is again another big um, push, especially for international flights. Um, so just be prepared to come in two hours. And when we say two or three hours, that means inside the terminal, not driving into the airport at 
getting into onto the airport property at three hours. I mean, actually stepping inside the terminal with your bags, um, three hours international to domestic. Um, so did that answer your question, Kyle? Yes, that was perfect. Thank you, Darren. And then Mary, will you be conducting a tour of Terminal C anytime soon? I guess, I mean, we can possibly do that for some smaller groups. So again, that's something I can work with Kyle and Scott. If you guys want to do um, small group tours, we can potentially look at doing stuff like that. Janine, I do have one more question. If you are accepted to global entry and you haven't gotten the appointment to get it finished, can you use TSA by showing you have been accepted? Truly, I am not an, um, proficient at global entry, so I'm not too sure how that all works. And again, maybe I can um, provide information for, for Kyle and Scott on CVP, who potentially could do a talk on, um, yeah, on the whole program and all that good stuff. So um, not something I know, but hopefully I can provide, get someone to answer that question for you. Yeah, that's a good question. Yep. Um, if anyone else has any other questions, I have a kind of a silly one, but um, if there's somebody that has something more relevant, feel free to add it to the chat. Um, I really wanna know why they put baggage claim on Terminal C on the top level. Yeah, so the whole point with um, that is having your arrivals be on the top because on the top level, you have all the light, you have all the windows. So after having a long flight, the whole thought is you arrive up into the light bright versus down into the dungeons of the terminal. So, you know, right here at terminals A, B, especially the international arrivals experiences, you go down into this windowless room. It's not the best welcome. So the whole point is you arrive up into the best level of the terminal where you got all the windows. And so that was the thinking behind flipping. So now you just got to solve the uh, stepping out into the swamp. I um, mean, that, that that's the real Orlando welcome is stepping yeah. outside the humidity and feeling the weather of Orlando. But yeah, <laughs> it's, uh, it's always nice, especially when you go to a dry climate for a bit and you come home. It's like, oh, feel the humidity. My skin can stop cracking now. We have a very specific smell. When you get off that plane, that smell of humidity, it, it's it's unique. It's only Orlando has that smell, I swear. But um, yeah. it definitely is. I bet well, if we could bottle it, someone would buy it. <laughs> I know somebody that makes candles. So we should talk to her. <laughs> All right, everyone. Thank you so much for attending. We don't have any more questions popping in. So we will go ahead and end. Um, I'll send a follow-up email for you all so you have Darren's information and access to the recording after this. It will be on the chapter's website, which if you don't already have a login for it, just click sign up and then you'll enter information. And then once it's approved, you'll get the welcome email and then you'll be able to view all the previous recordings. But thank you, everyone, and have a great rest of the week. Thank you, everyone. Thanks. Have a good week.